Hello and welcome to this video on the annotated bibliography. It's big fancy words which means something pretty simple. So you've been assigned to do an annotated bibliography and you're like, oh, what does that even mean? It's actually a wonderful uh, tool and a wonderful process to help you um, with your research project you will be working on. These are, the annotated bibliography is connected directly to research. Like you're going to have to write a research paper. So remember that research is a process. It's a process, okay? So as you read, you know, it requires that we dig and read and examine different perspectives on the same issue and that we look at these resources critically. Okay, so the idea is that you are, you have uh, something you're researching and you're looking at different resources on, you know, through all sorts of different things and you're trying to understand the situation here, okay? Now, the annotated bibliography actually helps us to organize our research and our thoughts about that research. So if you've been given a research topic and you're not sure exactly how to do it and you, you're trying to get some ideas, this annotated bibliography actually will help you organize and not only the research but the thought to help you narrow down what you're going to be writing about. So it's very helpful in that regard. Okay, it's kind of like this. Let's say you have to make a cake. Yay, happy birthday, okay? Now, if you're making a cake, um, you could, and I'm not much of a chef myself, but you know, I think it takes flour and eggs and sugar and stuff like this. So, you know, if I'm going to put together a cake, I mean, I wouldn't run to the store and buy flour and then come back in and do that step. And then run to a different store and buy sugar and then come back and do that step. And then after that, then run over to another store and get eggs and get that step. No, I wouldn't do that. What I would do first is basically we're gathering all the ingredients before we're even starting to create the cake, which is your research paper. You're going to gather all the ingredients together in one place, so when it's time to actually create it, you have everything at your fingertips. What? See how that works? Okay. So the goal is basically you should collect the articles and the resources that you feel are most helpful in understanding and exploring your topic. So again, it's like you're gathering together all these ingredients, so when it comes to write your paper, you have everything you need. And sometimes you realize, oh, maybe I don't need jalapenos for my birthday cake. Um, sometimes you may gather something that just doesn't fit. So that would be an example. Okay. So note, you want to make sure that you're picking articles and resources from a variety of places. If you pick them all from the same place, then you're not going to have the variety and maybe the perspective you need on different uh, topics. Okay. For each resource, you need to first put together the reference list citation. So if it's an MLA formatting, you put together the reference list citation in MLA. If it's an APA formatting, then you do that one. So you need all that information, and most of the on source, uh, the resources you can find, um, will actually generate those uh, reference lists for you. So that's one way to do it. And basically, the idea is that you're creating the references slash works cited page first. So if you're writing an APA style, it's a reference page. If you're writing an MLA file, uh, style, it is the works cited page. That's the last page that goes with your uh, paper, and so basically you're creating that first. You're gathering together that information first. Uh, again, it's like creating the gathering the ingredients. Now, okay. So now you have your sources. You found some good sources. Now, what are you going to do? Um, well, the the MTA bibliography takes it to another step. Okay. What you should do is you should write a paragraph about each source. Okay. So you found a resource on your topic, and then you need to write a paragraph about it. Okay. And it should include kind of the basic following information. You know, what is the article's point of view and the point of view that the author is trying to make? Okay, so what is this article saying, you know, about your topic? Okay, what is the author saying about that? Um, what does it bring to your particular understanding of the topic? So if you're trying to research, you know, gun control in America, what did this source bring to you? Uh, what does it back up as far as what your research is? What did it change as far as what your research said, or your, at least your running thesis, or uh, your working thesis, rather? Okay. Are there any places where the article fails to make its point? Sometimes, as you're reading through it, you realize, hmm, that's just not very good. Um, and it, it'll, it'll say, hey, look, all guns are bad. Maybe that's the title of it. And then you go actually to read it, and you realize, okay, it never makes that point. Does the article leave you with more questions about the subject? Ah, so maybe, as you're researching, you realize, hey, there's more to this than I thought there was. And I could actually maybe broaden my research or narrow it or redirect it a little bit based on what I have read. Wouldn't that be something, huh? Okay, but why? Why should we do the annotated bibliography? Well, because 
you want to get organized. Basically, you're just organizing the information. Again, back to the birthday cake. It's so much easier to put that cake together if you have all the ingredients at your fingertips. Okay, now a note. Okay, the articles and resources that you choose for your annotated bibliography are not the only ones you're allowed to use. So sometimes, as you're gathering the information and then you go to use, you know, write your research paper, you realize, man, I've gathered these, but I'm still missing something. Okay. So sometimes as you're putting your ingredients together, you think you have everything for your cake, and you're like, oh, you know what, I really do need some jalapenos. Um, I don't know why you put jalapenos on the cake, but sometimes you can go out and get an extra source if you think you're missing something, okay? Now, um, let's see, we'll not have to use all of these. Yes, okay, so um, let's say you research and you find 10 different articles. Well, you don't necessarily have to use every single one. Because sometimes uh, they are repetitive, and sometimes it's phrased better in one than the other, okay? So you'll not have to use all the resources again so if you gather and you realize you know what I just I think I'm gonna make this cake without um, lard okay so I'm not gonna use that this time I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to cooking okay so that's basically the end of the presentation but so basically the annotated bibliography again this basically is designed um, to you're putting together all your ingredients you're going to find sources and then basically write a paragraph about that source what it says so then when it comes time for you to write your paper then you can go to that annotated bibliography and you'll know exactly which sources have the information you're looking for that you can then put in your paper. What an idea. All right. There you go.